The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. She's an attorney and the judge on TV's divorce court. No, she we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. You not, you not might as well do anything. Spend a lot of time, no, I can't deny this pressure. He's R&B's prince of the love song. Spend a lot of time, and I can't deny it's pressure. With yet another project climbing the charts. We, we often joke because Kenny has been singing love songs for the past 25 years. I host a show called Divorce Court. <laughs> I know. So he, he brings people together and I tear them right apart. <laughs> Faith Jenkins and Kenny Lattimore laugh often, sharing their love story and their journey to marriage. You two married almost two years and you you marry, and not only do you marry, but then you guys marry and the world shuts down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was, the, what was the, the Lattimore household like? What was it like? <laughs> wow. It was, a, it was a beautiful thing. One, on the music side, I would say, Faith became the muse and the, the inspiration behind all of the lyrics that were on the album. I wasn't really going to do a contemporary album. I was going to do uh, a Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole project. That was really my goal. I thought it was an interesting time because I got to know Faith in a different way. We laugh at the whole quarantine thing in respect that the time that we were able to spend together in quarantine may equal five years <laughs> compared to what I would have normally been able to spend with her because of my travel schedule and all. I would have been in and out of visiting her at divorce court and all that, but I would have been on the road. But it was like God said, nope, you're going to stop. The whole world is going to stop. And the timing was perfect for us to get to know each other on a deeper level. That time has also given birth to his wife's new book, Sis, Don't Settle. The subtitle, How to Stay Smart in Matters of the Heart. So. Did Faith have a period of being dumb in matters of the heart? She sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to read all about it in the book. I know, I, I've read. I, so I'm I asking. told the stories. I told the stories. And that's, that's what it's really about. I dated for, I was out in the dating streets for 15 years <laughs> before I met my husband and uh, learned a lot of things the hard way. Learned them by going through the lessons. It was trial and error because I didn't have this huge example of what love looked like in my life growing up. Wow. And uh, it was rough. And I learned a lot of things, and I, I, but I learned from them. And that was the key, learning. And I wrote about them in the book because I feel if I share some of my stories and some of my experiences, other people can learn from them too. Why another book about relationships and you I'm asking this because you sort of detailed at the start why another book, but why another book? And I, I was a person who read all the relationship books, oh, wow. okay. but there was no one like me writing them. I would read a lot of books about relationships from men, other women who didn't have similar experiences, and I wanted to write something that I would have wanted to read when I was single and trying to navigate life and love. So not only do I give women encouragement because I was single for a long time. I remember turning 35 and where I'm from down in the South, you not being married at 35 is like seeing a dog walk on his hind legs. <laughs> it's very strange. And uh, so I want to encourage women who are waiting until they meet the right person, but still getting all those questions about why aren't they married? I want to encourage them, but I also Ephraim wanted to give really practical advice mm. on what to do in all of these different dating scenarios that you might encounter because I encountered a lot of them. But I had an epiphany in the process that it wasn't about finding the right person, it was about becoming the right person. Because when you became the right person and you knew who you were, you were, very, you were smarter about making the decisions and you were faster to make the right decisions about what was right and what was wrong for you. While Kenny has mastered singing love songs, he's seen the other side and suffered through divorce. Kenny, you meet your wife and you guys become fast friends. Mm -hmm. Were you looking for love or were you been there, done that? I'm... Oh no, I was. <laughs> okay. I, I had done the work that she's talking about. Ah. Uh, I had a period of, you know, do you like Kenny? You know, just dealing with me and where I am in my life and am I settled, am I whole, am I healthy? What do I have to really offer in a relationship? Because I believe that relationships should be sacrificial, they're service. So 
um, that period really put me in a position where I was like, I think I'm ready to date now with some seriousness. Not just I want to go out and have some fun or I just you know, want to hang out, whatever, but that I'm really ready for a committed relationship that, um, that I believe would bless my life and I, I would bless somebody else's. 